Moving on to more complicated equations where we've got several different sorts of variable parts, several different sorts of constant parts, possibly even parentheses and brackets that appear, what we would want is a nice orderly way of being able to address those more complicated looking equations so that we can break things down and eventually get our solution. So we want to start by looking at each side of the equation as though it was its own separate part, its own separate expression to simplify. So as you can see down at the bottom of the screen, looking at just the left hand side of my equation here, I want to distribute the 5 so I can clear out my parentheses. Then I can combine like terms, negative 15 and a plus 3, in order to get 5x minus 12. I want to then move to the right hand side of my equal sign and work out simplifying that expression. So I distribute the negative, then I have the two pieces with the x in them that can be combined together to give me 10x minus 2. Now I have x in two separate places, so because my goal is to have x equals I would like to have the letter X only show up on either the left-hand side or the right-hand side, not both. Which means I want to collect the variable terms all on one side of the equation. It does not matter which side you choose. My own personal preference is to create only positive numbers in front of my variable. So when I look at 5X and a 10X, 10x is bigger. So if I take all of my x stuff and move it over so that it appears on the right side, I will have a positive number appearing in front of the letter x. In order to move that, well, the opposite of a positive 5x is going to be a minus 5x. That leaves me with a negative 12 on the left-hand side. 10x minus 5x gives me the 5x in green and the negative 2, which is still there. This is closer towards my goal, but I still have both a 5 and a 2 that are connected with my letter x, so I would want to move those pieces out of the way. The nicest next step would be to move anything that is connected through adding or subtracting, which means that I'm going to want to move this negative 2 next, before I touch the 5. The opposite of a minus 2 is a plus 2, so negative 12 plus 2 gives me a negative 10, and on the right hand side only the 5x remaining. Now in order to get rid of the 5, 5x means 5 times x, the opposite of times is divide, divide on both sides by 5, and I will get an answer x equals negative 2. Now, this should be correct if I've done all the correct work, but I can make sure that I am correct by checking that answer, and I do in fact find that that is the correct answer. That is the solution, x equals negative 2. So for a new example with a similar feel, working only on the left-hand side, Inside the brackets, I have parentheses, so I will start with the parentheses and distribute the 3. <coughs> Everything else I will recopy. Now looking at this new step, inside of the brackets, there is a little bit of combining like terms that can be performed to give me 4p minus 6. And then finally, I can take the 4 from out in front and distribute to get the fully simplified left-hand side, 16p minus 24. That takes care of only the left-hand side. I need to go to the right-hand side of that equation, and I need to simplify that as much as possible. So again, I'm going to work with the parentheses and distributing. I'm distributing a 3. Then I can combine like terms, the negative 9 minus 2. So now I have 
the equation with only four pieces, 16p minus 24 equals 3p minus 11. That is the worst case scenario that at this particular stage we would have four pieces. We could have a more favorable situation of only three or two pieces that show up. We could even, in fact, have one or no pieces that would show up. That would be mighty unusual, but we have four. We do see that the variable P shows up on both the left and the right-hand sides, so we would want to combine those two parts together by moving them in a correct fashion. We can either move the 16P or we can move the 3P. It is your choice. My personal preference would be move the 3P using subtraction so that we end up with a positive number in front of the letter P. 16P minus 3P gives me 13P. The minus 24 hasn't been touched and the minus 11 has not been touched. We still have the 13 and the 24 connected with the letter P, so we would want to move those two out of the way. The next one that would be best to move is the 24. The opposite of subtraction is addition. Add 24 on both sides. Well, now in order to get the P by itself, we just need to divide on both sides by 13. So, it seems that we are getting an answer, P equals 1. If you go through the time and trouble of checking that, again, we always go back to the original equation to check those. So, if you take the time and trouble to go back to the original equation, at any place you see a P, you put in a 1, you put in a 1, you put in a 1. And see how everything on the left side plays out. See how everything on the right side plays out. If you get the same number on the left side as you do on the right side, then you do, in fact, have the correct answer, the correct solution, P equals 1. Other than these types of problems, I do want to show you two other types in case you are confronted with fractions or decimals. Let's start with fractions. Knowing again how most people feel about fractions, it would be nice if we had a way of getting rid of the fractions and obtaining a much friendlier equation and we can actually do that if we think about what the fraction bar means. Fraction bar means division. The opposite of division is multiplication. If we can find just the right number to multiply, we would be able to get rid of all of the denominators that appear. As it turns out, the special number that we want in order to accomplish that goal of clearing the denominators Is that we would multiply by the least common denominator. Looking at these denominators, 3, 2, 4, and another 3, the least common denominator for these would end up being 12. So in this particular exercise, I would want to take 12 and multiply it by everything that shows up on the left side of the equal sign. And I would want to take 12 and multiply it by everything that shows up on the right side of the equal sign. Which means that we would need to distribute to write that out in a way that will help us get all of the right pieces. Let's include an extra little step here about what this would look like. Twelve times two-thirds. Twelve times two is twenty-four. Twenty-four over three is eight. A. 12 times 1 half, 12 times 1 is 12. Divided by 2 is 6. 
12 times 3 fourths. 12 times 3 is 36. 36 over 4 is 9. A. 12 times 1 third. 12 times 1 is 12. 12 over 3 is 4. And in this particular example, let's go ahead and speed things along by moving our A stuff and our number stuff at the same time. So I want to move my A stuff from one side to the other. I don't want to move my number stuff in the opposite fashion. So I'm going to choose to move the 8A over to the right side by subtracting. 9A minus 8A gives me 1A. Now I don't want that 4 to linger there, so I'll go ahead and move that 4 off to the left side. In order to move that, I want to subtract by 4. So 6 minus 4 gives me 2. And again, I have what appears to be my answer. If you take the time and trouble to go and check that, you will find that that is, in fact, the correct answer. The solution, A equals 2. If confronted with decimals and you do not like to work with the decimals, then you can also move things around in such a way that you would create a problem that no longer has the decimal points appearing. Technically, it goes along with multiplication, but the shorthand result is to move each decimal point to the right until all decimal points are gone. So we start by moving each of our decimal points one spot. That would create a 16x minus 5 equals 22x minus 2. Are all of our decimal points gone? Yes. If this equation was a little bit different, I might have needed to move each of my decimal points another spot to the right. So all four of those decimal points that had originally appeared would have needed to move one more spot, possibly. So I would keep on performing that particular step again until all decimal points are gone. That gives me a very fast and dirty way of creating an equation that no longer has the decimal points in them. And again, to make things a little bit more quick, in this particular example, we would subtract on both sides to get a 6x. We would add on both sides in order to get a negative 3. And then we would have one other step where we would need to take both sides and divide by 6. And we see a fraction that can be reduced, so we must remember to reduce that. We appear to be getting an answer of negative one half. Depending on our instructions, we may also be able to provide an answer in decimal form, negative 0 0.5. Depends on the instructions. One of the things that all of these examples so far have had in common is that they have had answers, and that's not always the case with equations. So there are two possibilities. Equations could also turn out in these two ways. That we do not have any answer, or that in fact any number at all could be put in place of our variable letter. Because we can't predict how our equation is going to turn out, having one answer, no answer, or all answers, we follow the same set of steps that we've seen in the previous four examples. We begin by simplifying the left side, simplifying the right side, combining like terms, and attempting to collect all of our variable terms together. And in this particular example, our variable term disappears entirely and leaves us with this statement, 6 is equal to 6. That statement is always true. 
Since that statement is always true and does not depend at all on the x, you could have picked any x in the entire universe and everything would have worked out just fine. So, if you can pick any number, specifically any real number, then we would need to say that is our solution. Alternately, going through those steps of cleaning up the left-hand side, cleaning up the right-hand side, trying to combine our variable terms together, should those variable terms disappear and now leave us instead with a false statement, it would not matter what number you plug in for x, none of them at all will work because we will always end up with a false statement like this one. Negative 2 is never equal to negative 4. So we would say that there is no solution. Which means that, again, when we see an equation and we're told to solve, we begin by using the steps that were mentioned earlier in the notes, and we simply see how things work out. If our variable stuff happens to disappear, it will leave us with one of two possible statements. A statement that is always true, so we say our solution is all real numbers. It will leave us with a statement that is false, so we say that there is no solution. If our variable stuff continues to remain in the problem as we work our steps out, then what we will have is, for now, one solution.